fellow humans, welcome to yet another part of the 668 keyboard build. In this part I will be going through the process of hand wiring. If you are using the TNC microcontroller you can just follow the diagram linked in the thingiverse. However, since I'm using the Arduino Micro, the wiring diagram will be a little bit different and I will also have to modify the Arduino Micro to gain access to two more pins. So let's get into it. Arduino Micro has only 18 GPIO pins easily accessible, despite the MCU itself has 26 in total. However, 668 requires 20 connections. Luckily, two more pins B0 and D5 are wired to the onboard LEDs indicating TX and RX communication. Under the two LEDs you will find the resistors. Wires can either be connected directly to these resistors or resistors can be desoldered and then the wires can be soldered on the pads. This way the Arduino is upgraded with two more pins. I need to thank golem.hu for this guide on how to modify the micro. And now I'm going to explain you the process of hand wiring and I will show you the diagram I tried to draw. Hopefully it will be easy to follow. As first step, the diode will be soldered to the left leg of each switch. Black side of the diode will be facing away from the switch. It's very important to get this orientation right. Then the diodes are connected together for each row. After that, the switches will be connected in the columns with their right leg. So far this is the same as on TADA68 diagram, but here comes the difference with the Arduino which has different pinout. Rows are connected to the Arduino first, then comes the columns. I labeled connections in this diagram according to the Arduino Micro pinout labels. The TX LED and the RX LED labels are for the new pins created from the modification. This same diagram is linked in a video description, so be sure to check it out because it will be in higher resolution than the video. Ok, I hope I was able to explain the wiring process well. I will now move from the theory to practice. It's good to prepare the diodes by bending one of their legs 90 degrees. This way I will be able to wire the diodes and connect the roads in one step. Before soldering diodes I will put some solder on switch legs. So here's how to wire it. First I'm adding the diode to the left leg. The bent leg of the diode can act as a row connection to the following diode. In order to make the diode switch connection more reliable, the leg can be twisted around and the rest of the leg can be clipped off. Some legs don't reach to the next one, so in this case the additional wire is needed. And the rows are done. Before wiring the columns, I covered the row with a captain tape. Electrical tape can also be used, but captain tape can withstand a more heat, so it won't get accidentally damaged during the soldering, and that means it's uh, more reliable than electrical tape. 
However, this step is not needed at all, you don't need to use any tape. Columns are wired in the same way as shown in the diagram earlier. This time I will use magnet wire. It's a wire coated with thin layer of insulation which can be burned with the soldering iron. Wire is first twisted around the right leg of the top key, then it's soldered using high heat so the insulation melts. Then the wire is twisted around the rest of the keys in a given column and soldered the same way. Columns are done and I can move to the microcontroller. Arduino Micro does fit in the original case well, but later I have noticed that Umbinos made the case modification with a smaller hole to fit the micro USB better. So I need to modify the Arduino first and then I will wire the rows and columns according to the diagram. Hand wiring is finally done. I'm going to flash the firmware and test if every key is working. I'm flashing it with QMK firmware which already has the configuration for 668. Okay, and that's it for now. In the next final part, I will be finishing the assembly of the keyboard. Thank you for watching, see ya!